Let's take a moment to review droplet transmission. Droplet transmission occurs when an infected person coughs, sneezes, talks, or laughs and generates droplets that contain the germ that is causing their infection. These droplets are either directly deposited on another person or onto a surface where the droplets are touched or contacted by another person. Droplets are large and travel less than six feet from the source before settling out of the air. Because they are large, droplets don't stay in the air for very long. Droplet precautions are used when a resident is infected with a germ, like the flu. All standard precautions are observed in addition to placing the resident in a private room and asking all visitors and healthcare personnel who enter the room to wear a surgical mask. The mask should be removed before leaving and hand hygiene should be performed. There are many germs that require the use of droplet precautions. This list shows droplet spread germs that are found more often in the nursing home environment. Also shown is the duration of precautions for each germ listed. An additional way to control droplet spread germs is to have infected visitors, residents, and healthcare providers observe respiratory hygiene and cough etiquette. Respiratory hygiene and cough etiquette includes coughing or sneezing into your elbow, sleeve, or tissue, followed by hand hygiene with soap and water or an alcohol-based hand rub. Tissues should be disposed of in an appropriate foot-operated receptacle. The residents who are placed on droplet precautions should stay in their room unless it is medically necessary. If the resident is leaving the room, they should be asked to wear a mask during transport, but should not be asked to continuously wear the mask while in their room. Residents should also be educated about respiratory hygiene and cough etiquette and reminded to wash their hands appropriately. They should also remind their visitors about the need to wear a mask while visiting in the room. Previously on Gowns and Gloves, Vanessa becomes curious about Dimitri's obvious preference of Nurse Priscilla. Meanwhile, Mrs. Houston goes from standard precautions to contact precautions for her MRSA infection. Is she worried about her health? Or is she more concerned about meeting the granddaughter kept hidden from her since birth? Find out on Gowns and Gloves. Elaine, you must calm down. Your stress level is so high, I'm beginning to worry. Well, dear, I am worried. We had the perfect plan to fake getting sick so that I could find my long-lost granddaughter. Then I had Mercer colonization, then infection, and now I've contracted the flu. I know, I know, but it is worth it. We're getting so close. Good morning, Mrs. Houston. Please, call me Elaine. I'm so sorry about getting into such an uproar yesterday. But all this Mercer talk is hard to digest. Oh, don't worry about it. I'm so sorry to hear that you now have the flu. Because of that, though, I need to spend a few minutes with you discussing droplet precautions. You mean there's another sign on my door? I'm afraid so. But let's get you well so we can get it down as soon as possible. Okay. Let's have it. Uh, let's cut right there. I need an explanation on this. Uh, a mask for the flu, really? Who's writing this stuff, anyway? Actually, masks are an important part of stopping the spread of germs that are transmitted when coughing or sneezing. We use droplet precautions. If you refer to this right here. We use droplet precautions to prevent the spread of bad bugs like the flu. Uh, these infections are passed from one person to another through close respiratory or mucous membrane contact with respiratory secretions. In other words, you cough out or sneeze out tiny drops of water and they contain the germs. Now these droplets float around in the air, somebody breathes them in, and whammo, another infection. Now, it's preferred to have a single patient room, and we've got that covered here. The biggest difference for Dimitri is that he will need to wear a mask when he enters the room for any close contact with Mrs. Houston. That will prevent him from breathing in those tiny, contaminated droplets of water. Right. Okay, I'll buy it. And action! When you leave your room, you'll need to wear a mask like this one. 
a mask. Well, I'm already too warm. A mask will make me all sweaty and uncomfortable. It'll make my makeup run. Plus, everyone will know that I have an infection. Oh, how embarrassing. Huh. One day at a time, Mrs. Houston. Please. Elaine. Okay, Elaine. And you won't need to wear a mask right away because it's going to be a while before you feel well enough to leave the room. And it's important for you to practice good respiratory hygiene and cough etiquette. And when you cough, you want to make sure you direct your cough or sneeze away from people and, and into your arm or a tissue like this. <coughs> and uh, you always want to make sure you wash your hands afterwards. Okay, now run along so I can get some rest. Okay, guys, let's set up for the big finale. We have to find out what's going to happen to Mrs. Houston now that she's on droplet precautions. Oh, don't forget your house coat, darling. Thank you, dear. Here you go. Do I really have to wear this silly thing? Yes, Elaine, you do. You don't want anyone else to get that nasty flu bug now, do you? Of course not. I never noticed what beautiful blue eyes you have. The mask really highlights them. Thank you, dear. But in fact, your eyes look just like... <laughs> Come along, darling. We have a lot to do. Don't miss tomorrow's episode of Gowns and Gloves. Willie Lane and Priscilla reunite. Will Vanessa let Priscilla go on break this time? Will Elaine be discharged? And who will go home with her? Find out tomorrow on Gowns and Gloves.